Hello, everybody. This is Holly Taraya checking in live from my new location in Costa Rica. I am so happy to be returning back to the jungle and to be returning back to creation and creating content and sharing my heart with each and every one of you. So welcome, 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 welcome to my first episode of my new podcast, Soma Liberation Through Embodiment. This is an offering that I have been brewing over for many, many months and letting really fully take seed within me and germinate. And I'm so honored, thrilled, and excited to finally be birthing this out into the world and sharing it with you today. So episode one. So here we are, my pilot episode, and I wanted to take some time to introduce to you what my intention is with this podcast series. So some of these podcasts will be recorded with video and with audio, so you have the opportunity to either watch the content or listen to the content, depending on whether you're driving or walking, listening, it, listening to it as a podcast, or if you prefer to be at home and actually engaging uh, with the transmission and watch it through video, and I'll have that available on YouTube. So whichever way you are consuming this today, thank you for being here. Again, my name is Holly Taraya, and this is the Soma Liberation Through Embodiment podcast. So my intention with this offering is to have a platform to be able to communicate and share my heart's desires, my teachings, my wisdom, my lessons, things that I'm learning along the way and having a regular tuning and check-in with myself and with you. So I'm utilizing my voice as well to share. I've been a writer my whole life always enjoyed the art of writing and I'm at a point in my journey where that writing is wanting to travel upwards and instead be expressed through the medium of my voice. So vocal embodiment is a big part of my journey here and also a big part of my intention for this podcast and for this offering. So SOMA is my methodology that I've curated that is intended to bring you back to your body, back to the throne of your body. And my methodology includes both tantric and Taoist practices from the East, so tantra and Taoism, and then it merges together with shamanic philosophies and indigenous practices of the West. So Soma is actually a combination of both shamanism and tantra. So it's what I call shamanic tantra. And I'll be spending so many episodes talking more and more about what is Tantra, what is shamanism. But before I dive into that, I really want to take the time to share with you my deeper intention for this podcast. So Liberation Through Embodiment is its title. And I believe that all you are seeking, all that you desire, all that your heart desires, your body desires, your mind desires, is found in your body. And so with this podcast, I'll be sharing with you techniques, practices, and rituals to return you over and over again to the throne of your body. There are so many different ways to return to the present moment, and your body is the best door to enter, to return you to this moment. So through this podcast, I'll be sharing with you a lot of philosophy around why embodiment is so important and how it's helped me on my journey to liberation, on my journey to reclaim my freedom, my joy, and my truth. So Soma, my teachings of Soma, again, shamanic tantra, the weaving of shamanism and tantra together, is really woven around the four elements. So I'll also be introducing that throughout this podcast and offering as well. So the elements are what makes up your body. Earth, 
wind, fire, and water. You yourself are nature. So a huge part of my Soma teachings that coincide with Taoism and the way of nature will remind you of that, will remind you of your nature, will remind you of the importance of weaving together all the elements into your life to make the fabric of who you are. The, the elements are almost like strings, and when they weave and integrate together, they create you. They create a fully integrated and whole you. So oftentimes, our suffering comes from being disembodied, from not living in our vessels, from not fully inhabiting the wholeness of who we are. So a big intention for this podcast is to remind you to return over and over again to yourself, to your body, to your truth, to look within as opposed to looking outside of yourself, as opposed to waiting for somebody else to bring you truth, joy, and freedom, waiting for someone to give you permission to experience these things. I'm here to remind you that you yourself are the permissionary for your life. You yourself hold the keys in your very hands, in your body, in your breath. You hold the keys to the vehicle that can take you anywhere you want to in life, and that vehicle is your body. So Soma, returning to the body. In Greek, soma means of the body. So think of the word somatic. Whenever you have a somatic experience in life, it means that you are experiencing that moment through the body, through your senses, not just through the mind, not just in a cognitive and logical way, but it is somatic, it is cathartic. It is existential. And this is one of the deepest teachings of Tantra, is to live your life in an existential way, to experience life somatically, to experience life through your body, to call your spirit and your soul down and into your life experience so that you become fully alive, so that you blossom, so that you flower, so that you harvest. So my deepest intention with this podcast is to remind you again to return over and over to your body. And I'll be sharing all of my favorite ways to do that. I'll be sharing all my favorite philosophies, teachings, and nuggets of wisdom that have helped me along my journey. This is my gift to you. All the trials and tribulations, the victories, and disturbances and pleasures and pains, all of my life experience will be distilled and served in this podcast so that you can take it in and perhaps be inspired and perhaps remember your truth and why you came here and who you are underneath all the layers of conditioning and programming, who's waiting to be revealed to you. So one of my favorite metaphors with embodiment is visualizing the body as a house. So I want to take you through a little bit of a guided meditation here. And I invite you to close your eyes, come into a place of stillness within, and really imagine, hear these words. So you're walking through a dark forest perhaps feeling a little lonely on this path, perhaps feeling a little uncertain of what lay ahead. And you're walking, you're feeling the crisp forest air around you. You walk by several derelict houses. They're a little haunting because it appears that no one has been here for years and you wonder what sort of spirits, what sort of creepy crawlies and creatures are inhabiting this space. You notice that your walk briskly 
fastens a little bit as you try to avoid these haunting houses along your path, as you just wish to find your way home. And then suddenly, oh, you take a deep breath in, and you smell something so delicious off in the distance as the breeze comes towards you, it brings closer and closer this aroma, this aroma of home, of nourishment. You notice your favorite meal being cooked off in the background. Maybe it's an apple pie, maybe it's fried chicken, but whatever it is, mm. You can feel it settling into your body and you notice a deep hunger and desire coming from your stomach upwards through your body and you walk faster towards the smell. This fastness comes not to avoid the darkness that was behind you, but it is to walk closer to the hearth and home that lay ahead. And you follow and you follow and as you get closer and closer, this smell of home envelopes your body in a warm, vanilla-like blanket. And you start to hear laughter. And you start to hear the clinking of glasses and cheers and music off in the distance and people laughing and dancing and celebrating. <sighs> All of a sudden, every part of your body relaxes, your shoulders relax because you know that you are almost home. You are almost home. And after many a dark nights walking in this haunted forest, you feel at peace to be returning to this place. And off in the distance, you see the flickering lights. There is someone outside having a fire, and there's so many candles inside. And here you are. You have made it. You have made it once again to the warm home of celebration and laughter, of the home cooked meal, of shelter from the rain, and warm and dry clothes to welcome you from your long and lonely voyage. And you feel so grateful, so grateful to enter this space and to be received with such love and warmth and recognition. Just taking a nice deep breath here. Really feeling that sense of belonging and home and welcoming and nourishment in your body. Maybe feeling it like a bright light radiating from your inside out. Beautiful. So, my friends, this home is you. This place of warmth and recognition, nourishment, this, this is your body. This is you. And the journey through the dark and lonely forest with passing by these houses that are derelict and long forgotten, this is your journey out of your body. This is your disembodiment. See, most of us have made this journey where we have left who we are, we have left the truth of who we are, we have walked out of the four walls that we call home. We have left our bodies and we have gone seeking outside of ourselves. We have gone seeking for joy, for warmth, for recognition, for welcoming, for nourishment, for love, for freedom. We have gone so far outside of ourselves that we are now lost far away from familiarity, far away from truth. And it is dark out there in the woods of disembodiment. It is lonely. Perhaps you've dropped your light along the way and you have nothing to guide your path ahead. So my friends, this offering to you with Soma, with the liberation that you receive through embodiment, through turning back around on your forgotten path and returning back to yourself, to your body, 
entering once again back into the temple of yourself. It's the reminder today that all you seek is within you. And so with all the elements, like I said, you are woven together. Your body is stitched together with the fabric of life. And the fabric of life is drawn from the elements. Earth, wind, fire, and water. So I love to utilize the metaphor of these elements with the house. So earth is your physical body. This is your physical body, your blood, your bones. This is the part of you that once your soul leaves this body, this body still remains for quite some time, and it is the last thing of you that remains. So this is the house, right? And the embodiment metaphor of the house being a returning home to yourself. Your body, the earth element within you, is the house. It's the four walls. It's the pillars. It's the foundation, it's the brick, it's the mortar, it's the wood. It is the physical body. It is where it all begins and where it all ends. And without the physical body, there is no place to gather. Without the physical body, there is no place to hold a lantern. And there is no way to reflect the light that's inside. So the earth element symbolizes your physical body. Then we move to the fire element. The fire element is your soul body. This is when you walk past a house, you know when someone's home because the lights are on. There's warmth radiating through the eyes. This is the metaphor of the house. There's a fire going in the fireplace, the lights are on. There are people home. When you are embodied, and when people look at you, and they see into your eyes, they know that someone is home. And when you are disembodied, and you're not inhabiting your soul, and the fire has gone out within you, there are no lights on. The light is there. But it is so dim. It is so dim. And when people walk by you, they cannot see your soul. So I know that you understand this familiarity when you see someone and they're fully embodied and you can see their joy and you can see the fire within them, the passion within them. Their soul is fully online in their physical body. You know it. They are radiant. And when you look in their eyes, which are the windows to the soul, and you look deeply into the eyes, they shine, they shimmer, they sparkle. There's a magnetism to them. So again, if you were walking into, into the woods, into the dark and lonely forest, and you'd lost your light along the way, and you came past two houses, one where there were no lights, and one that was fully lit up from the inside out, which one would you feel safe to be around? Which one would you want to enter? The one with the lights on. It's like trick-or-treating when you were a little kid. If the lights are on, that means someone is home. And if someone is home, that means they have something to share with you. Maybe you can come sit up on their porch and they can pour you a glass of wine and tell you stories. That is what it means to be fully inhabited in your fire element, in your soul body. The lights are on and you are welcome and you give off a welcoming presence to all those around you and walking by you. And you radiate heat and inspiration and vitality to people. So returning home to the throne of your body and reclaiming the fire element means inhabiting your soul body, finding your joy, in your warmth, what lights you up, what turns you on, and then utilizing that fire element to transform, alchemize, and dissolve anything into the hearth, into your fireplace that is not true. Then we move up to the air 
element. So imagine that you are in this house now, this sturdy house built with the earth, radiating warmth and light through the fire and through the sunshine inside. And now you open the windows and you let the light from the outside in. You open the sunroof. You maybe even build a patio and you open the windows and you let in the air element. You can breathe deeply now. We all know that feeling on the first corner of spring when we open our windows for the first time in months and we let the air in. Think about what happens in your body when you let in the air element. Think about what happens in your home when you let in the air element, how do you feel? Oh, fresh, light, inspired, free, tingly, and liberated, okay? So this is the air element, it's fresh, there's movement, there's inspiration, there's prana, and there's life flowing through the house that you inhabit, which is your body. So returning to the throne of your body right, body, and entering your house, of your home of your body, involves reclaiming the air element and lightening yourself, allowing yourself freedom. And then the final element of the Soma journey that we reclaim through the journey of embodiment, the journey of returning home to ourselves, is water. And this is our nourishment. Water symbolizes all that we do and enjoy in our house. The friendship, the food, the laughter, the music, the lovemaking, the celebrating. After all, this is why we have a home, right? And this is why we have a body is so that we can share ourselves, share the fruit of ourselves with everyone around us. It's important to have alone time. It's important to be in your home by yourself and reflect and restore. And it's also so important to open the doors of your heart and let others in. This is the water element. This is where we practice the art of devotion and celebration. And on the path of Tantra, this is what life is all about. We build the house, we light the fire, we turn on the lights, we keep it clean, we keep it clear, we open the windows, we cut fresh flowers and set them on the altar so that we can love, so that we can feed so that we can inspire and celebrate and sing and dance. What is the point of having a home if you never have any guests? What is the point of having a body if you never have any love? So my friends, the reminder here with the water element, with your heart, is to journey as deeply as you can into yourself and build your home. Start today. It doesn't matter how far off your path you have gone into the dark and lonely woods of disembodiment. My invitation to you today is to return, to reclaim yourself, to remember that the reason you left your house in the first place, the reason you left your body is to find the fire, to find the friends, to find the purpose. And your purpose can only be experienced existentially through you, through your body, through your heart, through your soul, through your spirit. So, Return to yourself, come back to your house, come back to your body. And this is what this Soma offering here with my podcast is all about, my friends. 
we will be taking this journey back home to ourselves together. And I will be sharing with you all my favorite tools, practices, meditations, remembrances, as I myself am returning back home to who I am. And I want to share these teachings with you. I want to share them with you because what would be the point of me having veered throughout my life so far off my path to then return if not to share the teachings, if not to share the wisdom, and to bring some humor and humility and love, truth, and grace to you through my experience. Hmm. So thank you so much for joining me today on the pilot of this podcast. This is such a treat for me to be sharing this offering with you and such a gift to be able to share this teaching through the, the wisdom of my voice and through the resonance of my voice. So inviting you to subscribe to this channel and to share, to share this offering with your friends, to anyone who you believe could benefit from depth in their journey, from more richness in their journey, and for anyone who wants to learn more about Taoism, Tantra, and Shamanism, share this with them. And I am open to receiving your questions as well. I would love for this to be a dialogue between me and you. So any questions that you have, please send them my way. You can find me at hollytoriah.com. That's H-O-L-L-Y-T-U-R-I-Y-A.com. My email is on there. Currently not on social media, taking a big pause from that, but my inbox is open and ready to receive your insights and inspiration from this podcast today. So thank you for tuning in, my friends. Wishing you truth, beauty, and freedom on your journey back home to yourself. Aho and namaste.